Dear all, welcome to the class of International Economics. So today we are analyzing different exchange rate regimes, fixed, flexible and hybrid exchange rate regimes or systems. In the last class we have already discussed what is exchange rate and what are the changes or variations in exchange rate, what is devaluation, revaluation. So today we will be discussing different regimes of exchange rate. There are mainly there are three uh, regimes fixed exchange rate regime, flexible exchange rate system, then hybrid. Hybrid can be in different ways. So we will be discussing one by one. What is fixed exchange rate system? As the name indicates, exchange rate is fixed. Who fixes? It might be by the government or central bank. In the current scenario, we know that the exchange rate is around 72 uh, rupees is equal to 1 dollar. And the government fixed that rate and there is no any uh, change in that uh, rate, 72 rupees is equal to 1 dollar, then it is a fixed exchange rate regime. But there is a provision of devaluation or revaluation if there is any urgency. So if the government wants to make any changes, so they can make a revaluation or devaluation. Okay. So this kind of system is known as fixed exchange rate regime. It is also known as official power of the exchange because official power means that uh, fixed exchange rate is there. So it is also known as official power of the exchange. Here the central banks or the government buys the, uh, buy the foreign exchange when exchange rate is low. Exchange rate is low means uh, there is an excess supply in the market. There is an excess dollar in the market. So the government will buy that excess dollar and the exchange rate will be uh, going up. And where, when there is an excess demand, the exchange rate will be high, then the government will sell the foreign, dollar, foreign uh, currencies or foreign exchange. So by selling and uh, 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 by selling and buying through this operation, the government fixes the exchange rate and there won't be much changes in the exchange rate. But occasionally there might be having devaluation or revaluation. You know already what is revaluation and devaluation. Okay. So market intervention in such a situation is called pegging or buffer, buffer stock operation. Pegging operation or buffer stock operation in foreign exchange. So this buying and selling is known as pegging operation or buffer stock operation in foreign exchange. But, uh, you know, there are uh, so many positive side of this fixed exchange rate regime uh, that are it avoids the wide, uh, wild fluctuations. There won't be uh, wild fluctuations in the exchange rate because it is already fixed by the government. And it also av avoids the uncertainty because everybody knows what is the exchange rate and everybody knows that there won't be much changes in the exchange rate. So it also stabilizing the speculation. So there is no uh, much scope for the speculation, speculative activities. Because there is no much uncertainty in the exchange rate. And less inflationary. If the exchange rate is uh, always changing according to the situation. So there will be a pass through from the exchange rate to the inflation. If the currency depreciate too much, so it will uh, lead to the more inflation in the economy. But here, there is no any uh, chance of uh, depreciation, so th there won't be much chance for inflationary pressure. And it will uh, give more stability to open economy. 
there won't be much changes that's why it gives more stability and also it promotes international trade why because it gives more confidence to the people because there won't be much changes so everybody knows and they will have more confidence in making contracts of ex uh, export and imports okay so these are the positive side of uh, fixed exchange rate regimes okay so there are uh, some disadvantages also for this firstly balance of payment disequilibrium can be corrected by other variables not with the exchange rate other variables can be money supply interest rate investment income or prices so by using any of these variables balance of payment disequilibrium should be corrected because the uh, exchange rate uh, cannot be used for the balance of payment problems okay so this is the one disadvantage and another one is large occasional changes there won't there won't be frequent changes in the exchange rate but there might be a large occasional devaluation or large occasional revaluation so this is also another disadvantage of fixed exchange rate regime the lack of efficient allocation of resources here there is a control of exchange rate and everything is not determined according to the market forces that's why there is a lack of efficient allocation of resources we know that in the perfect competition the efficiency will be high but here it is not a perfect competition there is a control over the exchange rate okay that's why there won't be much efficiency in the market then it prevent each nation from achieving optimum inflation and unemployment trade off so these two are the main internal objectives right inflation and unemployment so always one uh, you know government tries to avoid unempl unemployment and also they will try to reduce inflation but they can't concentrate on this because they need to focus on exchange rate because if they want to keep the exchange rate fixed they need to buy and sell uh, foreign exchange so they will be f focusing more on this buffer stock operations not on unemployment and inflation okay so this is another limitation and uh, there is a cost of government intervention government should buy and sell so this is also need some kind of cost for this interventions so these all are the limitations or disadvantages of fixed exchange rate then what about uh, floating exchange rate or we can say flexible exchange rate as we uh, you know understand from the name itself uh, there, there there is no any fixed exchange rate but there it will be floating or it will be flexible flexible to flexible according to the demand and supply or the market forces so a currency is free floating if its exchange rate is allowed to vary against that of other currencies so this 72 rupees is equal to 1 dollar it is not fixed tomorrow it might be uh, 73 or it might be 71 so there is a possibility of changes in that exchange rate then we can say that it is flexible exchange rate system or floating exchange rate floating according to the market forces so here how the exchange rate is fixed exchange rate is fixed according to the demand and supply of the foreign exchange okay exchange rate is fixed according to the demand and supply of foreign exchange then foreign exchange is just like any other product you know that the price of any uh, product is determined according to the demand and supply of that product in the same situation according to the demand and supply the price of one currency is also fixed 
okay so uh, we can uh, see how the demand is uh, what is the demand for foreign exchange we can foreign exchange we can take the example of dollar what is the demand why there is a, do a demand for dollar dollars demand is a derived demand derived demand how uh, derived demand because when we need uh, dollars if you want to import some items from us or if you want to uh, you know send some money from here to us okay or uh, you know for any purpose so if you want to buy some products from us we need dollars so this is obviously the demand for dollar itself we might need the uh, you know uh, foreign products or we want to import that products but for to buy that product we need dollars so ultimately the demand for dollar is a derived demand for, from all these uh, you know uh, imports or any other uh, purposes that's why it is known as derived demand then this is a, a, a downward sloping demand function is a downward sloping sloping curve you can see that in the x axis there is a quantity of foreign exchange then you can see that it, it can be quantity of total dollars available to, uh, available total dollars then the in the y axis there is a exchange rate then you can see a negative downward sloping uh, demand curve why if the exchange rate is very high the people will be demanding very less but if exchange rate is very less then the people will demand more dollars or more foreign exchange then uh, this is compared uh, i mean it can be compared with uh, any other products so if the price of dollar is very less suppose that the dollar is available at 20 rupees everybody will be interested to get the dollar so the demand also will be high but the price of the dollar is very high it is 70 rupees or 120 rupees then the demand will be less okay so the, what about the supply curve the supply of the foreign exchange refers to the different quantities of foreign currency available how we are getting this foreign exchange how we are getting this uh, dollars okay we already said that the demand is for imports from us well, then what about how we will be getting the dollars suppose that if we are making some exports to us we will be getting dollars okay or suppose that some uh, foreigners from us they are coming here and they want to travel because they will have dollars in their hands so uh, we can get the dollars from them also so these all are the uh, you know sources of availability of dollars this all this all are the supply of dollars okay so this uh, curve also will be upward sloping upward sloping curve why because if the exchange rate is very high the people will be ready to uh, I mean ready to sell more dollars to us suppose that if if we are ready to give 120 rupees for one dollar I mean the foreigners will be happy to give more dollars because its price is high as any other product if the price is high then the people will be interested to uh, supply more dollars so that's why we have a positive slope then uh, the the equilibrium of exchange rate is determined at the intersection of demand and supply of uh, of of any currency okay so the demand and supply of dollar is uh, you know will be like this then the exchange rate is will exchange rate will be determined according to this demand and supply then if there is a excess supply then exchange rate will come down if there is a excess demand exchange rate will go up okay suppose that uh, you know the uh, exchange rate is 50 is equal to 1 dollar and there is a excess demand by the uh, by the people then the it will go up the uh, from 50 to it can go to 70 is equal to 1 dollar 
okay since this is uh, occurring uh, because of this market forces we will say appreciation and depreciation not devaluation so the, here there is a possibility of appreciation and depreciation but in fixed exchange rate system there is a possibility of devaluation and revaluation so if there is any changes in the uh, demand curve completely so according to that also there will be changes in the rate of exchange or exchange rate okay in uh, and the supply uh, supply uh, curve also might be shifting so according to that there will be depreciation and appreciation okay what are the advantages of uh, this flexible exchange rate system the firstly balance of payment disequilibrium can be corrected by changes in exchange rate in the last classes we have said that if there is a depreciation automatically the export will go up the balance of payment problem will be solved okay so the balance of payment problems can be solved by the exchange rate itself not with not with any other variables then the flexible exchange rate frees the monetary policy for domestic goals such as growth and i mean reduction in unemployment reduction in inflation because there is no any cut off for exchange rate so the government is not interested to put some kind of exchange rate or fix some kind of exchange rate it is determined according to market forces so the government can can uh, concentrate more on monetary policy and other policies uh, to achieve uh, you know uh, optimum growth and optimum employment this is another positive side then another thing is that it can uh, reach uh, desired inflation and employment trade off okay there is always an employment uh, and inflation trade off so it can be tackled uh, through any monetary policy because now monetary policy is free then it removes the danger of costly policies and eliminate the cost of government intervention there is no any buying and selling here then it protect the economy from external shocks so these all are the advantages of uh, fixed uh, so flexible exchange rate system but then also there are some disadvantages for this there might be wild fluctuation fluctuations in the exchange rate because it is determined according to the market forces then a wild fluctuations may lead an employment due to reallocation of resources here also there might be there is a possibility of unemployment because uh, you know there might be a reallocation of resources from uh, you know one sector to another sector according to this exchange rate sh shifts then high uncertainty and instability nobody knows what will happen tomorrow and there is uncertainty and instability in this economy then destabilizing speculation speculation may go up and the people are will be interested more in speculation okay so and more inflationary trend will be there because there will be high exchange rate pass through because if there is a high depreciation automatically it will be transmitted to the inflation okay so more inflationary pressure then less stabilizing they not suit, suited for developing countries especially because uh, as any developing countries uh, we can see that there will be continuously depreciating trend and tendency as we see in india especially after 90s we can see continuously depreciating tendency we can't say that india is completely flexible but we have managed floating then also this continuous tendency of depreciating that's why we are saying it is not for, suited for the developing countries then along with this fixed and flexible there are some hybrid exchange rate systems like uh, adjustable peg system crawling peg system then managed floating exchange rate also can be considered as a hybrid exchange rate system so these all systems are uh, you know in the mid range of flexible and uh, uh, fixed exchange rate system okay 
so firstly uh, what is adjustable pack system it is almost closer to fixed exchange rate system adjustable pack system is one under which exchange rates or par values are periodically changed to correct balance of payment okay so the exchange rate is almost fixed but there will be some periodical changes to correct the balance of payment problems that's why adjustable peg system okay so it requires par values and allowed a band of fluctuations and periodical changes in par values actually britain wood system which was there from 1945 uh, it was based on adjustable peg system and this system is also known as system of maximum devaluation there is a possibility of maximum devaluation okay so this is uh, adjustable peg system then what about crawling peg system crawling peg system is one under uh, which the par values or the exchange rate are changed by very small pronounced percentages at frequent and clearly specified intervals until the equilibrium right is reached so this is also some kind of fixed exchange rate system but there is also flexibility and there will be a small uh, pronounced uh, percentages changes okay as at the frequent and clearly specified intervals until the equilibrium is reached so the exchange rate is fixed but there will be small changes always at at a, uh, you know frequent and specified intervals there will be small small changes to correct the balance of payment equilibrium or to uh, get into the equilibrium level of exchange rate okay so it is closer to floating exchange rate system so here you can see that uh, where it uh, stands in one side we have floating exchange rate and one side we have fixed exchange rate system so crawling peg is uh, you know uh, it is closer to a floating exchange rate and adjustable peg is closer to fixed exchange rate system and this crawling peg is also known as a throttling peg or gliding parity okay no large devaluation but in the adjustable peg there is a possibility of large devaluation maximum devaluation but here it won there will be small small changes okay so these are the two important hybrid exchange rate system and managed floating exchange rate system also can be considered as a hybrid exchange rate system but it, it contains the positive sides of both fixed and flexible exchange rate system under managed float exchange rate is uh ma exchange rate is allowed to move in response to the market forces so under the managed floating the exchange rate is uh, you know uh, will be moving according to the market force forces but monetary authorities intervene in the forex market to smooth out the short term fluctuations not long run to smooth out the short term fluctuations in exchange rates so if there is a small changes in the exchange rate the government or the central bank can intervene but it is not always it is also rare case that's why it is known as managed floating so it all it is also in mid range of fixed and flexible because it has the peculiarity of flexible exchange rate system and also it has the some features of fixed exchange rate system that's why we as calling it can also be considered as a hybrid exchange rate system okay so uh, britain wood we said that it is adjustable peg system but it converted into uh, you know managed floating in 1971 because there was a band of one uh, percentage and it was widened to 2.25 percentage uh, in smithsonian agreement in 1971 so we can say that uh, it led to the uh, i mean uh, managed floating exchange rate regimes okay so the, and in this time i mean especially in 72 the european countries decided to restrict the fluctuations between their currencies 
plus or, plus or minus 1.125 of their par values and plus or minus 2.25 with dollar so they fixed a band and they increase that band 1.125 with their par values and 2.25 with the dollar so there will be uh, changes uh, up to that there won't be much changes this is known as snake in the uh, tunnel and also known as european snake because european countries decided to do this in the picture you can see that uh, you know it is like a snake there won't be much changes beyond that okay that's why it is known as snake in the tunnel tunnel means a hole so that a snake will be in in that tunnel but after we said that from 71 onwards the country started to following managed floating but in 76 uh, the you know more countries uh, started following even flexible exchange rate that's why we can say that from 1976 jamaica agreement formalized the floating exchange rate system some of the countries you know moved to floating or flexible exchange rate system from 76 onwards okay so what is uh, you know there are two types of managed floating one is clean float and another one is dirty float clean float it is purely determined by the uh, you know market forces there won't be much intervention by the central bank in the exchange rate regimes so more or less it is completely determined by the market forces but still there will be some intervention by the uh, central bank but in dirty float it is determined by the market forces but the monetary authorities intervene in the foreign exchange market through pegging operations so in the dirty float there will be more intervention but in clean float there will be less intervention by the central bank or government so these are these two uh, are the you know a division of uh, managed floating exchange rate two types okay in the current scenario we can see when we are you know checking the you know different countries they may not be following uh, exactly the floating or fixed exchange rate system but they might be you know following any kind of uh, like uh, a floating regime might be independent floating or lightly managed floating and most of the countries are following intermediate regimes like a managed floating like in india we have uh, managed floating and there is also crawling float a small uh, intervention by the central bank so there is a, there is a crawling float also and uh, some other countries are following soft pegging or hard pegging soft pegging means like a crawling peg or pegged with bands or fixed peg then hard pegging like currency board currency board means uh, you know the, it is almost like a fixed exchange rate system and it is also uh, by a legislative commitment and uh, you know uh, uh, the we have uh, there are so many examples for this uh, we can see you know in the previous uh, 1940 uh, before 1914 uh, before the first world war we have this kind of currency board and we have almost fixed exchange rate system and there are uh, uh, other uh, hard pegging like a currency union or we can say monetary union like a euro so they will have one uh, currency in everywhere and there is also possibility of dollarization means adopting one foreign country as their currency so this is these are the different uh, you know common practice nowadays you can uh, if you uh, if you're interested you can uh, go through all this in detail so here i am showing uh, you know different countries are di following different uh, systems so united uh, states uh, you can uh, see in red color then some countries are uh, following a currency pegged to the us dollar you can see in orange then uh, some countries are uh, you know pegged to the us dollar but it is flexible tie with the us dollar so that country is in yellow you can see 
then eurozone in dark blue you can see then uh, countries are uh, some countries are connected uh, or pegged to the euro in blue line you can see in light blue you can see there is a uh, flexible tie up with euro okay then lastly some african countries they uh, they are not uh, you know pegging with uh, any other euro or dollar so they are uh, you know uh, they are uh, making a uh, connection with uh, uh, a large number a basket of currencies okay so these are the you know a broad picture of different exchange rate uh, uh, systems okay so for this purpose you can uh, uh, refer the ranan verma itself and you can also refer through the uh, internet sources thank you thank you very much for listening me